Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 139 of Build Your Stash and Craft. This week, um, we are going to make something that I saw at a craft store in a little package, and I thought, that's really awesome. I want some of that, but I wanted to make my own. And so, this is what we are going to make this week. We are going to make film strips, just like when we were younger, and we used to take pictures and you get your pictures back and in with the pictures they would have the little film strips in there and so I just thought it was really cool so I tested it out my hubby and I were away for the weekend and I tested it out while we were away and it worked really well I thought it was cool so I'm gonna show you how I did it now I left it a little sticky on the back if you don't want it sticky on the back just take some of your mica powder or baby powder either one and put it on the back and then the back won't be sticky I left it that way so that I could stick it down if I wanted to with a little assistance of some glue. So the first thing that I did was I pulled out a book and this is an encyclopedia of animals and I tested it to make sure that it actually would work because some things don't work real well. So if you're going to try a magazine, try one magazine, just put a piece of tape on one picture, try it, see if it works and um, and then go from there. If it just doesn't seem to work or it's really too hard to work, um, you know, maybe try a different one. But this one I thought worked out really well and it did teach me something also. You really don't want the dark background. So, um, you know, we'll look at that as we go through this because I did pick one with a, with a dark background. So I just got a bunch of pictures and what I did this time, which I did not do the first time was, I made sure that all my pictures were about the same size. I mean, width wise, they're gonna be as wide as this, but lengthwise, my other ones, I had some shorter ones and some longer ones. So when I split it up, so it's supposed to look like a film roll, in, in some places it was longer than others and I adjusted as best I could to kind of shorten some of the long ones and lengthen some of the short ones. Um, so this time what I did was I cut all of my pictures the same length. So then when I go to divide them into slides, into different individual pictures, they'll be about the same size. And then you're just gonna to wanna to tape, I measured these and they wind up being about 12 inches long. First thing I'm gonna do is take this off the end and keep it right here so I can put it back on because otherwise if you lose this tape and you have to try and peel it off, it is terrible. So I'm gonna do about 12 inches, which that should be enough. Now hopefully I can get it off there without getting it all stuck together. <laughs> I can't get it to rip. There we go. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it sticky side up Right here on my parchment. I'm gonna grab this end with my ruler so I can get my finger off the other end is the only reason why. Stick that on there. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take your pictures and you're just going to start at one end of your tape. Just move this down a little bit. And just take your picture, put it on the tape. And you're just going to do that all the way down until you wind up with all of your individual little frames of photos that you took when you went on vacation. I went on a wilderness vacation by the looks of it here. Oh, well, that one's stuck down now. I got a little bit of a gap here, but I'll just have to cover that up with a with the marker because this one I got quite crooked. All right, now what I'm going to do is just get rid of the tape at the end. Well, maybe I'll just fold it over. I think I'll do that. I can always cut it off later if I want to. But I'm not folding it over onto my picture or I won't be able to um, take the backing off my picture. I'm just folding it over right on itself. And I don't really know why. But just in case I might want to have it there. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're just going to stick this no, before we stick it in the warm water, don't forget this part. You need to burnish it down really well. And you can burnish it with anything you have. I usually just use my finger or I use a pen or a pencil or, I think here's a pencil, let's do that. And I burnish, and I usually, no, I'm gonna do it this way. I burnish it one way and then the other way. And I do each of the pictures individually 
so that I kind of know that I got it. If I try and do the full length, then, you know, I could very possibly miss bits. And so we're just going to do this, and this takes a minute, but I'm not going to turn the camera off because it doesn't take that long. But yes, I just, I thought that this was really, really quite fun when I saw it at the craft store. I, I almost bought it at the craft store, but it was $5. And I didn't want to spend $5. I think it was like 24 inches long or something, so it was longer than this, but I did not want to pay $5 for it. Especially when I could have the enjoyment and the fun of making it myself. And I could choose exactly what pictures I wanted to have on it. And, you know, you could even, I'm going to guess, you could take your own family photos, copy them on your copy machine. If you have, like, an inkjet printer, just a, I think that's just like a regular type printer. Um, copy your family photos and do this with them. And I bet, I don't really know for sure, just thinking that, um, I think that that ink would probably come off on your tape because this paper here I didn't have a book or magazine with me with pictures in it so these were um, off a little I have a little like six by six scrapbooking pack and that's where I got these pictures from so you know and that's just painted you know copied paper like that so mm -hmm. okay so once you get that all burnished down really well so that the the tape is 100% really stuck to the front of that picture then you're going to, I think I'll do it from the back real quick too, um, then you're going to put it in the water. Now this paper from this book is super heavy. So it's going to take a few minutes to like really get kind of wet, to really get soaked in. So if it's really thin paper, like magazine paper, it just takes a second. You know, I mean, you put it in, you get it wet. But this one is a little bit shiny. And um, so, you know, that resists the water just a little bit, and it's very, very heavy. And so it's taking a second for the water to get soaked in. And I'm going to leave the whole thing right in the water as I go through it. I'm not going to, like, take it out and do them one at a time because I want them all to be quite wet. So I'm just going to do like that. And then what you do is you just start rubbing until you get just a little bit of a hole. And once you get a little bit of a hole in the backing of the paper, then it's a whole lot easier. Sorry for the shaking, you might shake. Okay, so now I'm just gonna roll that paper right off of there. And the more paper you get off, the more translucent it is. But at some point, you will go from rubbing off the paper to rubbing off the ink. And so you just have to kind of find that happy spot. The back of this, if you don't get all the paper off where the paper is, it will turn, when it dries, the paper will go back toward, to looking kind of white. Um, and you never get rid of absolutely all of it, unless, like I said, you take off the, the color. So being that we're using this as a film strip, it doesn't really, you know, the back doesn't really matter. You just don't want big chunks of it anywhere. And what could we do with this? We could take this and it, it's kind of hard to do because it's slipping around on the other ones. Um, you can use this in a journal as a belly band. You can go, you can put your pictures on here. I put them sideways. You could put them all on um, up and down so that they would be running from top to bottom. Um, you know, and so you could use it in journal. You can lose it on your... Um, on your pockets, you can use it on tags, and then you can also use it for things like, you could put it on like a glass candle holder or a glass um, jar of some sort and wrap this around there. Now it has its own sticky, so it will stick a little bit, but I would not count it to stick completely, especially that when it's this long and if it's going to get any kind of handling. So I would just put a little bit of glue um, just around the edges. Just give it a little extra help to stick. And because it's not totally transparent, I don't think that that would show through at all. 
And so what I'm doing now is getting the heavy paper off first. And then you can, once you get all the heavy paper off, then you can go back and see how much white is left and see how much of that you think that you need to get off. And you don't have to do all of it underwater. I always take this first layer off underwater because it just seems to be easier, whether I'm doing something like this where it's longer, even if I'm just doing one little piece. And I am finding that I have moved this over so it's not on top of the pile. And it's a whole lot easier because it's not slipping, slipping around trying to keep that pile all stacked up. But, so yeah, so you don't, you know, it doesn't have to just be used for journals. It can be used for, for decoration of any sort. Um, you know, you can put it, you know, on a card. Now, now that I've just, I've thought about, you know, copying pictures of family, I'm going to have to try that because that's got me intrigued. I think that might be fun to do that, copy pictures of the family, and then, you know, put it around a candle holder or something and give them as gifts for birthdays or Christmas, you know. Give like a mother one with pictures of her kids, um, especially for someone who's as old as I am, which is, I'm only in my 50s. I won't say which end. Um, th this is something I remember. I think it's cool. You know, the, the younger generation, they don't, I don't know how much any of them ever remember even seeing um, you know, the, the little film strips that came when you picked up your pictures. And so I, now I'm just taking off just a little, there's just a little bit of extra white and I want to see the picture through just a little bit better. And now this would be where you would want to try and make your white even if you're going to do something like stick it in a glass jar or, you know, stick it in a, on a jar and put a candle behind it. Because if you're gonna light it from behind, if you leave a big chunk of white pulp on the back in one spot, that spot will be darker because the light won't shine through as much. So, you know, so at this point you'd wanna just, it doesn't matter if you leave some pulp on there, just try and leave the same thickness of pulp. And so I'm just being careful not to rub it too hard so that I actually start taking the paint off. And we have almost got to the other end. And now these pictures are a little bit bigger so they'll be trimmed off the top and the bottom so that they're just on the tape. And that has to be done before you put your black lines on. Otherwise you won't get, it'll be hard to get your black lines in the right spot. Okay, I'm going to call that good because it's taking a while, which it does, but it's actually kind of fun to do. So, actually, I find all things kind of fun to do. There's not that many things that I think is just too monotonous, even when it takes a while, if, if I have something to do. I need to keep my hands busy anyway, so what does it matter to me how I'm keeping my hands busy? Um, so long as I'm doing it. So just want to take a little of the water off of there. And I just put that back in the water to get most of that pulp off that I had just rubbed, rubbed off. And I want the pulp off the paper here too. Just going to kind of dry it because it has to be dry in order to put your lines on. But isn't that cool? We don't even have the lines on it yet. And it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I am going to trim off the, the top little bits here that are sticking over the edge because I want a nice straight edge. So when I draw my line to get my film reel on there, like this, that I have a nice straight edge and a nice straight line to put my little... Um, marks on there. So I'm going to cut the tops off and I'm going to let this dry just a little bit so that and we are going to do it right on the on the plastic part so the bottom doesn't have to be completely dry but I do want it to be kind of dry so that I know my pen's going to work really well and I will be right back and we'll put the lines on it. 
Okay, so I am back and it's all dry. I've trimmed off any um, extras on the top and the bottom. I did do the bottom and kind of get it started a bit so that we could actually get all the way finished without it taking forever. But, and so then what you're gonna do is once it's dry and see, there is still quite a bit of white on the back of this, but they're all kind of the, the same evenness of white so that if we shine a light through it, um, it should look it should look pretty good so if, if you want to put it on a candle holder or something um, so then the next thing that we're going to do is just take our ruler and I have a piece of plastic under here you could have a piece of parchment under it um, I put the white on the background so that I could just see and then what you do is line your ruler up with just a tiny bit of your picture sticking out just enough for your pen to cover up the edge of the paper so I'm just going to put it on there like that and just start at one end. And I use a ruler so that I get a nice straight line that will make it look a little bit better. You know, like more like an actual film strip. If it's a little wavy, it might not look quite as good. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to come down far enough. Remember that your pen is going to take up this much space, a little bit of space. So um, you don't want to come down so that your pen is right next to the other line. You want to have a gap. So you're going to come down probably about an eighth of an inch. And you just want to make sure you're straight is really the only thing. Um, it, because we need to leave a gap so that we can put our extra little, little marks in there to where the camera would grab a hold of the film and pull it through. So we're just going to put a nice line right there. Okay, and because I was kind of rocking it back and forth, I'm going to go just one time all the way down so it's just kind of straight. Okay, so now what we have is we have two lines, just like that. And then all you're going to do is just go in you can start wherever you want to and just color a little black mark skip a little bit color a little black mark and skip a little bit and you're just gonna do that down the whole thing and that gives you those little spaces where the camera you have to you used to have to line them up with the gear in the camera make sure that you had it in there right otherwise you would take your pictures and when you went to take it out it never advanced and you had no pictures on your roll but you didn't know that until after you had it developed those were the good old days so you just do this the whole way and the thing is if you want to make them exact you can I went a little fast there and got outside the lines um, but I don't think anyone is going to look at it so closely to say that little black mark's a little wider than that one or that little hole spot is a little wider than the other. It's all just for effect. And so you just do this all the way to the end and then you're going to put some lines between each of the pictures and they don't have this little bit at least the the one that I saw at the store didn't and I was going to actually pull out an old set of pictures and look at the the little what do you call this the slide strip or film strip but I forgot to but I don't think they do because the reason that this has the little marks is because that's the part that moved the film through the camera. Okay, and then the one thing I wanted to show you, I did this eagle on purpose because it's dark. And so the thing with, the, with a picture that has a dark background along the edges, doesn't matter what's in the middle, but when it's dark along the edges, when you look at the rabbit and you really see that and then you look at the eagle it's there but it's not noticeable so if you wanted to cut this off and like use it like that up close 
you can see it. But at any distance, it's not as noticeable. Where like this one, you really see it. You know, it really looks like it's a, a piece of a film strip. So that's why you want to be careful about having a dark background. But if you have a dark something that's got a dark background and you love it, it's not going to hurt anything. It just won't be as noticeable. And what we're going to do is right between the two pictures, we are just going to put a line basically at the edge of one picture and the edge of the next. It's just going to be one line. But one line is a little bit thin. So we're just going to do two right next to each other so that they touch. So we just have a little bit of a thicker line there. And then don't forget, when you get all of your lines done, the rabbit's crooked, so I have to try and make this line straight and hope that I'm actually going to make it straight. And I'm going to move that one closer to the rabbit and take a little bit more line on this side. And don't forget, when you get to either end, to put a line at the very end so that each one has a black line on each side of it. Okay. And I'm going to still leave these little edges on here because in case I want to wrap it or something and I want to glue it right here and then wrap it around something. But there we go. We have our film strip. And I just think that they look really cool. So, um, let's see. We need to figure out what we need for next week. Put these on here so you can look at those. And then... Okay, for next week, we are going to need some wide ribbon. It doesn't matter what kind of ribbon it is. Um, and we are going to need some paper clips, our sewing kit, and that really should be about it. Um, maybe some fingernail polish to paint the paper clips if you just have silver and want them to be colored. So that's what we're going to need for next week. I've already got the big paper clips in my stash and the fingernail polish and the sewing kit. So the only thing that I had to spend this week, the only thing we should have to spend this week is $1 for a piece of wide ribbon. <coughs> Excuse me. And you want it to be two to three inches wide. Does this one say, yeah, this one is two inches wide. And two inches wide is good. And three inches wide is, is okay also. You don't really want it any wider than that, but no thinner than two. So that's what we'll need for next week. We're going to spend a dollar. We'll put the other four dollars in our bank. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making these. I think I'm going to have fun playing with them. So, and yes, my, my hands look yucky because I painted my fingernails while we were gone. I painted them green and I tried to get it all off and I did pretty good but so sorry about that I'm trying to get a bunch of videos done today so that everything is is all set up for a few weeks but anyways there we go there is our film strip and I hope that you try it I hope you have a good time trying it because it's really fun and you'll have to let me know what you do with yours so thanks again for watching I really do appreciate it and I hope that you all have an outstanding day bye bye